All right, guys, so going ahead and getting right into it. Again, this is kind of like, I guess you could call it the software follow-up update with the Pixel 6 Pro. It's well beyond the three month mark or just about the three month mark at this point, man. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of my experience since downloading um, the December update and the January update. We'll kind of cover both since a lot of people got the December and January update all in one shot. So to go ahead and get right into it, man, um, I originally, like I said, Pixel 6 Pro was purchased day one. so. In late October, we started off with that November kind of patch. We kind of got like a day one patch or, or, or your device might have shipped with it, whatever. And mid-November, some users, not everybody, um, I was lucky enough to get it, but we got an over the air update uh, that actually helped out with the fingerprint sensor. So the fingerprint sensor as a whole essentially um, did get better in, in, in my opinion from there. So fingerprint sensor did get a lot better in terms of um, speed, it got a little bit faster. Um, accuracy was way better. When I first got the device, fingerprint sensor was like really, really spotty, really, really finicky. I'm always gonna be in the camp of wanting that accuracy over speed. I'll take accuracy over speed any day. If I can have both, that's gonna be the dream, right? But anyway, so got that you know kind of mid-November patch that was only for the fingerprint sensor. December comes rolling around and obviously Pixel 5a and earlier users got that the first Monday as what we're used to with the Pixel series, where, six, um, where Pixel 6 series owners unfortunately didn't get to take part of that. We actually had to wait. Google kind of put out a statement kind of letting us know what was going to, I don't need you Google, I'm not calling you. Anyway, they put out a statement for us so we could kind of know what was going on and they were saying it was going to be you know kind of late december kind of the same story that we got with the uh january update so december continued to kind of come and go the whole nine yards and um out of nowhere we kind of got the like the over the air update for the december patch kind of rolling out to to various users now i'm in the camp where i believe that that was definitely regional um, here, you can kind of see me there. What's going on, guys? But yeah, it was kind of regional, right? Like, whereas a lot of the users here in the States didn't get it, I was lucky enough to know how to sideload, which I do have a video up of how to do that on the channel. Go check it out if you're interested, man. Like I said, step-by-step -step tutorial. But I was one of the lucky ones that were able to sideload that December update, and that December update did wonders, right? We keep hearing and seeing these tweets and these videos of people you know, talking about their experience is bad or their experience isn't good or whatever the case may be. But a lot of these users were not on that December patch. The December patch fixed a lot of the bugs that I had and I had everything. The only bugs that I are the only uh, bugs that I didn't have were like the connectivity issue bugs and the calling bugs, my calling and my data always I've never had problems with them every other bug like every other bug the refresh rate bug the um kind of sluggishness and lag when you're going through different applications the system ui crashes the app crashes all of that stuff the the lag in the camera sometimes i had all of it all of it um even even the spotty kind of um portrait mode which that in my opinion wasn't really a bug it's just google needed to kind of fine tune that's actually and i know a lot of people aren't talking about it, but that's actually been improved with, with the december update too i said a lot of people aren't talking about that but the um the portrait mode edge detection kind of got spotty when when the pixel 6 line first came out definitely i'm seeing some improvements with that on the december update but anyways um like i said the december update just from the change log you could already see that they were making some major gains in terms of squashing bugs on the pixel 6 series but a lot of users didn't have that so obviously they can only talk about what they have right so it is what it is or whatever the case may be i had the december update now again it didn't fix every bug i had that refresh rate bug where it would throttle to 60 stay there and it wouldn't go back up until i rebooted my device that stayed now the only way i was able to get that uh, bug fixed or resolved or whatever unfortunately i did have to go thermonuclear on my pixel and i had to factory update it but like i said once i factory you know updated it I didn't have any issues with refresh rate at all. Like I would say the only place I'm, I'm seeing any type of issues with refresh rate is obviously in the Twitter app. 
And again, like I'm still in the camp where, and it's actually kind of smooth right now, but like you can kind of notice like the micro stutter somewhat. I've kind of just learned to live with it. It is what it is, but I'm having that on multiple devices on Android 12. I'm having that on my um, S21 Ultra as well. And I've kind of defaulted to using um, Flamingo, which is another Twitter client. I'll kind of use this one just to kind of scroll through and then I'll use the actual Twitter app to reply notifications. Does it get annoying that I gotta use two apps sometimes? Yeah, but it is what it is. You know, you kind of learn to live with some of this stuff. But anyway, like I said, all, all of the issues for the most part that I had were taken care of with that December update. And the January update kind of came, I immediately sideloaded that as well. And that kind of made the device just feel a little bit more responsive and a little bit more fluid, right? So like I said, the device already felt pretty snappy, pretty responsive, but the January update for me personally kind of just gave it a little bit of extra reliability and stability. Now, there were a couple things that I was still having issues with, and I'll kind of touch on those here in this video, but as a whole, man, like when I use my Pixel device now, I'm getting an experience that I'm, well, I won't say A, I'm getting the experience that I've come to know and love when it comes to using Google devices. Now, I won't say that it's as optimized or as polished as Android 11. Obviously not because this is a major kind of redesign and UI overhaul. I'm not expecting it to be just yet. As time you know progresses and this device ages, that polish and that optimization will happen. We're still very much in the infancy of this device. So like I said, it kind of is what it is. Um, now that's also not to give Google a pass because I do feel as though their kind of like update uh, kind of cycle or, or how they you know begin rolling out updates is still kind of spotty with this device and we still have to ask ourselves some questions. You know, are, you know, you know uh, us few who are Pixel 6 series owners, are we gonna have an issue where we have to wait for, you know, that monthly security patch every single month? Or has Google finally kind of caught up to what it should be? And can we expect to receive those updates the same way that other Pixel users do as well? So there's a lot of information that we still quite don't know yet that we're still kind of trying to figure out and, and Google still has yet to kind of answer that. But like I said, before we head out, I wanna just get into the two bugs that I do still have. So one of the bugs is specifically with the uh, YouTube application. I'm gonna try to see if I can demonstrate it here for you guys. And again, I think that this is an issue with picture in picture rather than an issue with the Pixel device. I haven't experienced this on any other device but a Pixel. Obviously, I haven't experienced it with um, in, in any of my Samsung devices on Android 12 because they handle split screen multitasking a little bit differently than Google handles it with the Pixel. But pretty much what'll happen is I'll go to my videos because I don't want to we'll go to my Bellroy one, which favorite case for the Pixel 6 Pro guys, definitely check it out. I am rocking the Spigen Thin Fit right now because I'm using a kind of metal, um, I'll call it faux MagSafe plate in the back for my car mount, but Bellroy uh, leather case, super, super dope, favorite case. Check out this video if you haven't yet. But anyway, so if I go and invoke split view multitasking, right? And it actually did it. So you'll see, I went and did multitasking. I have the UI slider here, but for whatever reason, I don't have the interface. I'm swiping up here. Absolutely, I just did a screenshot, but absolutely nothing. The device literally isn't responding to the gestures. Only this one. And the only way out of this is to either swipe up that way or swipe down the other way and it'll bring it in a picture in picture window. So like I said, I don't know what the issue is. I have kind of figured out how to not make it happen when I do want to use split view. And that's essentially to go in and turn off picture in picture. So once you go in and turn off picture in picture, you bring up that same, I'll bring up the same video. Uh, I'm not, I don't need to like it. I'm so used to liking videos as soon as I go into YouTube, it's funny. But anyway, then I go back into split view and as you'll see, absolutely no issues at all. Split view works as intended. So like I said, I think that that's an issue with the YouTube application in regards to how picture in picture is working. I haven't been able to get that same uh, kind of bug to happen on you know my Samsung devices, but again, they handle 
multitasking differently. And I don't have any other devices uh, besides Pixel devices that are on Android 12. So like I said, that that's kind of how I've figured out how to get around that. I honestly end up using like the, the multi view, split view, um, multitasking more than picture in picture anyway. So it hasn't been too much of an issue for me, but I do like to have both of them enabled. Sometimes I just want to use picture in picture because I just want that little window there. And, and like I said, sometimes I want to use multi window. Um, I, one of the ways that I like to use kind of picture in picture and multi window together is I'll have a YouTube um, video as a picture in picture window. And then I may have like Microsoft Teams at the top for my job just to kind of keep an eye on things. I don't need to action anything, but just to keep an eye on it. And then I'll be scrolling Twitter at the bottom so I can watch a YouTube video, have my you know work stuff going on and be scrolling Twitter at the same time. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I want to have everything working as it should. So as YouTube continues to update their app, I'll keep an eye on that and let you guys know what's going on. But the other issue I was having, and I kind of discovered that it wasn't necessarily a bug, it's just the way that this device was made, um, was actually with the auto brightness. So the way that the auto brightness works, I know a lot of people haven't been paying attention to it. The way that the auto brightness works on this device is Google has two sensors for auto brightness. They have one on the front and they have one somewhere here on the back. They use two different sensors. And yo, shout out to the homie um, Delvion Digital. Go check him out on Twitter. I'll make sure I send the, I put a link to his tweet because he demonstrates this. And what uh, happens is the back sensor also controls auto brightness. Now, I'm guessing Google has some reason for doing this. It personally doesn't benefit me in any way, shape or form. But what I would find is I would be in bed watching, you know, TV and, and you know, the, it, the room would be dark and I'm watching TV. And as the kind of uh, show or movie I was watching, you know, went through scenes and things like that, if, it, if there was like a lighter background, then you know the screen brightness would turn up if it was like darker or a darker scene kind of like like a scary movie or something that's darker the auto brightness i would have no issues but it would be fluctuating constantly so i just got to the point where i just turned auto brightness off and like i said again i don't know if that's the full reason why you know people are having issues with auto brightness but that was the one that i found kind of um you know what was was like the overlying cost for me so i just turned auto brightness off and i just manage it you know by myself and kind of just change it as i need to but those were the only two things that i am still experiencing one i think is like i said on the youtube side the application the other one i think it's just google using that back sensor so maybe oh just took a screenshot maybe they just need to you know change how sensitive the back sensor is compared to the front or whatever like i said honestly don't know but those are the only two things that i'm experiencing guys everything else has been smooth sailing man pixel 6 pro has my main sim card i didn't want t-mobile digit so i have two specific sim cards kind of with the same line uh, but this one has one of my main sim cards right now i'm only carrying the pixel 6 pro I'm fluctuating between like four different devices right now to give you guys some coverage and stuff like that but this is kind of like i said my primary main device right now man like i am loving this experience especially after this january update and it's only going to get better because like i said google's not going to stop pushing software updates out but again i'm not giving google a pass there are some things that they need to focus on and improve software updates getting back to where they should be is definitely number one on that list let people know that they can count on you to push out these software updates in a timely fashion that's going to be huge because that's one of the reasons why people buy pixel devices right so let's let, let's go ahead and get back on the money and back on the road with that google that'll probably solve that you know kind of like the main issue or whatever the case may be i still think that the pixel 6 and the pixel 6 pro are great devices and great devices if you love google devices i, I still you know to anyone who's interested i still would recommend both of the devices um but like i said guys as far as my experience my issues with the device i've laid it all out on the table this is definitely not the last stop with me talking about this device expect way more coverage with it especially now where i'm like fully in and loving it man like expect way more videos camera samples all of that over on twitter so follow me on there guys but that's the pixel 6 pro in my experience thus far 
So that's been my experience with the Pixel 6 Pro after the January update. Like I said, guys, it's been fantastic, but I wanna hear from you. What's your experience been like? Are you still having issues? Or is your experience completely fixed and you're doing great? Either way, let me know down in the comment section below. As always, guys, this is Ike's Tech Talk. I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out.